All right, so the next uh, uh, topic is a combination. Now, a combination and a permutation have a lot in common. In fact, the combination formula starts with a permutation, and then it takes out all of the different orderings of the things that we're going to take at a time because order doesn't matter in a combination. So what I've written here is this combination formula in terms of a permutation and then removing the R different arrangements of the things that we're taking. So combination, um, for example, if we were thinking about our example of getting a governing body in a combination we wouldn't care um, if we had a president, a secretary, a treasurer, or um, or a vice president. What we would instead just say is we've got a governing body. We're going to choose four people. They're going to be the governing body. They're, one's not any better or any different than another. So if we choose Bill, Sally, Joe, and Bob, Bill, so it's Sally, Joe, Bob is the same as Joe, Bob, Sally, Bill. And that's what we're doing with this R factorial. We're taking out those arrangements. So this is a combination. And this is um, N choose R is how we say these. And so what you see down here in the note on my notes is that CAT means the same as CTA, which means the same as ACT, which means the same, same as TAC, which is the same as ATC, which is the same is TCA. And those are all of the, the arrangements that we're looking at is all the arrangements of the letter, the three letters. And there are three factorial arrangements of three letters. And that's why you would take those out. You'd divide them out. So let's look at that example that I was just talking about, about a governing body. So um, we're going to look at the difference in this example between a permutation and a combination. So we really highlight the difference because that's the most difficult thing to do between permutations and combinations is how do I know the difference between the two of them? So if I want to know a permutation, the permutation is going to set up that you know one person is better than another person or there is a unique arrangement, there's a unique ordering that has to go on. So if there are five people up for nomination for a governing board and those people are Joe, Alice, Sue, Ellie, and Bill, how many ways can the governing board of three be choosing, chosen from these five people for, for nomination? So part A of this example is really just a combination because if I choose Joe, Alice, and Sue and I'm just choosing them for a governing board, Alice is chosen first, Sue is chosen second, Joe is chosen third, is the same as Alice being chosen first, Joe being chosen second, and Sue being chosen third. It doesn't matter who's chosen first, second, or third, they're all the same. They're going to be the same governing board. It's the same three people up in front of you. So what we have here is we have five, choose three. And so we'll see the combination, or the permutation, five, and then factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. That's what we would have seen for a permutation, but this time around we'll divide out the, the different orderings of those three people, meaning that we're going to take out, oh, Joe, Alice, and Sue is the same as Sue, Alice, and Joe is the same as Alice, Sue, Joe, and blah, 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 the six different ways that there are to do that. So here what we have is we have 5 times 4 times 3, times 2, times 1, and then we're going to divide that by 3, times 2, times 1, and then we're going to multiply that by 5 minus 3, which is 2, so 2 factorial, 2 times 1. And what we see is those will cancel with those, and 2 will go into 4, 2 times, and so we see that the number of ways we can do this is only 10. Now let's take a look at our um, calculator and see that. So 5, choose, and I'm choosing 3 at a time, and there we go. There's our 10. And you see the factorial um, notation here showing you the combinations um, way of doing this. And so that's the combination. Now our second example in this particular example says how many ways can a president, secretary, and treasurer be chosen? Now the second example 
this is the permutation because if Alice is cho chosen as president, Sue is chosen as secretary, and Bill's chosen as um, treasurer, that's different than Bill being chosen president, Sue being chosen uh, secretary, and Alice being chosen as treasurer. So this time around, it's just 5 permute 3. And so in this case, we're seeing 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. And this is going to give us 2 factorial down here. So we see 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 1. And this time around, we see that there is 20 times 3 or 60 ways that this can happen. Let's see that on our calculator. So clear this one out. 5 permute 3, and you see that's the 60. So our, um, our permutations, there are more ways this can happen because you have the additional of how, how the people can fit in the different slots, and that's what gives the permutations more ways of happening. Okay, now the next example, um, we'll put these ideas together for one last thing with our probabilities. So I give a homework assignment in my algebra class where I randomly choose five problems to grade. So if there are 18 problems in my homework assignment, how many ways are there for me to choose five from among those 18? So what you need to ask yourself here is, does order matter? Does it matter if I choose um, problem one, then two, and then three, and then four, and then five? Or would that be just as good as choosing problem five, and then problem four, and then problem three, and then problem two, and then problem one? And you should answer that as, yes, the order doesn't matter. So this is going to be a combination problem, 18 choose 5, because problem 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, those are all the same. I'm choosing the same groups. So this is going to look like 18 factorial over 5 factorial and then times 8 minus 5 factorial. I do want my students to get used to writing that out because that's one of the things that I always ask um, to be given on tests. So we have 18 choose 5 and that tells us that there are 8,568 ways that I can choose the problems. Now question B Question B says, if a, problem, a student only did five problems out of 18, what is the probability that the student did the pro five problems that I chose to correct? correct? Now, I've seen a lot of different ways of doing this problem, but essentially what I'm looking at is the probability that they did the correct five is there's one way to do these five problems, right? So uh, there's only one set that is correct, so this is one out of the total number of ways that I can choose to do the problems. So this is 1 out of 8,568. And if we go to our calculator, that means I'll take the reciprocal of that number, and that gives me a very, very small chance of getting the correct problems. In other words, if you just choose to do one set of um, five problems, you're not likely to get 100% on your homework assignment. You have to work a little bit harder than that. All right, now part C says, if a student did 12 of the 18 problems, how many different groups of five could this student have done? Well, this student only has 12 problems to choose from, right? So they choose how many ways can they get five groups out of the 12? So this is 12 factorial over 5 factorial times 12 minus 5 factorial. And then we'll let our calculator take care of it. So clear this out, and this time 12 choose 5. And that gives us 792. So this person, by doing 12 problems, they have done 792 groupings of 5. Now look at what the next problem says. So 
if um, what is the probability that the student that did 12 problems did the five that I graded. So the person that did 12, their probability of doing the correct five given that they've only done 12, right, is the 792 that they did out of the 8,568 that, um, that they have done, so or they could have done. So that is going to be the probability this time around. So let's go figure out what that is. And this is then divided by, and this is 8,568, and that equals, and this is a lot better probability, right? Now it's 0 0.0924. So they have a 9.24% chance uh, or of getting their problems 100%. So they've upped their probability of getting the correct 5 considerably. But still, only doing 12 isn't all that great. You're still not likely to get 100%. That's, you know, that's not unusual to get 100% at this point, but it's not very likely either. Um, so if I were doing my problems, I wouldn't want to just take the chance of getting 12 or doing 12. But if that's all I could do, heck, I'd go for it, right? <laughs> that would be that would be a really good idea. Now, that pretty much ends probability, so I'm going to end this video here. And in Triola's um, most recent Essentials book, he's now put in some, um, I think he may, have, he may have some stuff on binomial probabilities in here, or the binomial distribution, because binomial distribution is indeed related to combinations. So I may have one more video in this section that doesn't directly relate to probabilities, but I'm not sure. I have to go back and check the, the latest edition and see where that, where that leaves off.